Hello, my name is Greg King, and I'm with Hasselblad in the U.S. Today I'm at Photospace, Denver's premier rental studio, along with Dan Yon, the owner, who's also a pilot and a photographer, and also Dan O'Neill, a photographer and a videographer. And today we're going to show you the setup and integration of the Hasselblad H6D100C, our 100 megapixel camera, with the DJI M600 Pro drone with a Ronin MX gimbal on it. Now, one of the things I want to mention about the camera before we begin, there's a lot of videos uh, on the web about the camera and, and the array of lenses we manufacture and all the accessories. But what I, I want to make sure everybody knows is that this camera is just a stock camera. This is the same camera that a photographer would use for fashion, for commercial photography, for architecture, and he could do it for those ki kinds of jobs, and then he could take it and he could fly it on the drone with this simple integration that we're going to show you today. Now, I know this video isn't about uh, cases, but I want to give one little plug to uh, uh, Go Professional Cases. And they're at uh, gpcinc.com. And this is the case that I use when I carry around our drone, and it's specifically made for the M600 Pro and a ton of accessories. And it has three different layers, two that are removable, so that you can access everything on the two bottom layers. So it's a great case for, for this drone. And there's a couple of different ones that they make, but I like this one because this one you're actually able to take on an airliner and you can check it as luggage. So let's start putting it together. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take out the landing gear. Because if you don't, as soon as you take off the, uh, the top layer, the landing gear will fall out. And then one of the things I like to do is to always make sure that the GPS units, which there's three on this drone, are positioned straight up so when I do take off this first layer, you don't have any possibility of damaging the GPS unit. So I'm going to take that off for now and set it aside. And then now we'll take out our M600 Pro. And I like to store the drone without the, um, the batteries in it because it puts a lot less weight on the, on the drone when it's standing on its arms. So I keep the batteries out until later in the process. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the landing gear and we're going to put it on either side. So first we're going to flip up these two side arms to make room for the landing gear. And then we're going to take the landing gear and what's important here is that you put it in the correct position. So you always put it to where this knob is in the inside towards the drone. And then on this piece, there's a piece that holds the springs. And that has to be on the outside. And one of the nice things is they pretty much make it to where you can't assemble it wrong. And then you take it here and you put it into the receptor. And then I like to not lock it in yet because that'll kind of raise the drone. And then we also have some springs that we'll be putting on the legs. So we'll take the second side here. And we'll do the same thing on this side. We'll just put it into the receptor. And then at this point, we'll lift up the drone by the sidearm, lock that into place. Do the same thing on this side. Make sure that locks into place. Now both of those landing gears are, are real solid. And then we have a set of springs, helper springs that we put on that'll help raise the landing gear. And this is why it's important that on this side of the drone, you have those little, that little piece that's on the landing gear. And then this clips into there. And we'll do the same thing on this side. Okay, and then next we're going to put the camera on the gimbal and balance it. And to be able to do that, one, we need to take it off the, off the M600, and we're going to put it on this tuning stand for the MX. So we'll come over here and put that on there. We'll go ahead and put up the rest of these arms. Since our landing gear is down. Okay. 
Okay, and then we have two straps to keep the, the Ronin MX in the storage position while it's in that GPC case. So we're gonna take those off. And then now we're gonna use a specialty, part of a specialty kit that, um, that DJI provides, which is an extended long plate made for heavier cameras like the RED camera and for the Hasselblad. And we're gonna put it on the bottom here and we're gonna make sure that these three screws point towards the lens because this is for an optional uh, lens holder. And then we have a special adapter that has two pins on it that go into corresponding pins on the Hasselblad to make sure that the camera doesn't twist. And then I have found through testing with balancing the 50 millimeter that I try to line it up to where the back plate is right above the speaker holes that are on the back of the camera. And that keeps you from coming back and having to keep moving the plate while you're balancing the camera. And then what I try to do, and again, it's from experimenting uh, with this particular lens, I try to move the camera back as far as I can to where you can tilt it up, even though that's not a position we're gonna use. It gives me a point of reference to where the eye cup just barely clears the back of the gimbal. And then if that releases a little bit too loose, you just tighten it down a little bit. Okay, so then we have the camera on there. And now we have to take the Ronin MX Hasselblad control box. So this is the box that allows the camera and the drone to communicate back and forth in their different languages. And that clips on the back here using the dovetail instead of using additional counterweights back here. And that's gonna be the interface from the camera to the, to the Ronin MX. So at this point, we're ready to balance the camera. Okay, so now we have the cords hooked up. So we're gonna do one final test. So first we're gonna put on the Ronin battery. And test for the yaw. That's holding well. So now we're ready to go back and put the Ronin MX back onto the M600 Pro. Okay, now we have that balanced. Now we're ready to put the batteries into the M600 Pro. What's important about the batteries is that they give you stickers so that you keep the same, same batteries together. And those stickers also, besides having a particular color, also have a number. And it's important to put them in the same slot and that way, if there is an imbalance in the battery power, the Go software will come up and will tell you to change out certain batteries in certain slots. So two more of those. And these batteries are nice. You only have to turn one of them on and they automatically turn on all the other batteries and the same things with shut off. Okay, so we have the batteries in. We're all set, we're all balanced. We have the cords all, all plugged in. So now what I'm gonna do is take this upper layer of the case and just for simplicity, put it back into the case so that I can pull out some of the other items we're, we're gonna use now. So we're gonna use two, controller, two controllers. One controller is gonna be for the pilot, so he'd be controlling the aircraft. And then we also have a second controller that would be for the photographer, and the photographer would use it to control the gimbal 
and to shoot pictures, set ISO, do the different settings on the camera. Control. So now we have both those, those on. Let's put the batteries on. And these are very long lasting batteries. So now we're ready to uh, start powering up. So the first thing we're gonna do, and it needs to be done in a particular order, is we're gonna power up the drone. So you push a short pulse and then a longer pulse to start it up. And then again, it'll start up all the batteries and it'll also give a pretty good screech to let you know that you're powered up. So we have that powered up. Now we're gonna power up the camera. And then lastly, we'll power up the Ronin. Now the Ronin's taken hold. So we'll take the master controller. So again, this is the one the pilot would have. And again, we press and press again. And it automatically turns on the display. And then you heard the, the camera shutter open for live video. So now the, the joysticks will control the, the drone as the pilot flies. And then the view that he's getting here is the view from our POV camera. So he's able to keep that view going as opposed to the photographer who's gonna be looking through the camera lens. So he has all the basic controls that the different drone, different DJI drones have, uh, but he's seeing it through the POV camera. And this is the slave controller with the same screen. So now with this controller, the photographer can work the gimbal. He can do a tilt up and down. He can do left and right. And then he can also control the yaw. And then his view is through the actual camera lens. So he's able to frame it just the way a photographer would. And then instead of the pilot controls, what he has down here, he can adjust the ISO, he can control the aperture, he can control the shutter speed, and then he can either decide to put the focus on infinity or to use the autofocus. And then he also has his different shooting modes. He can go on manual where he's setting his exposure or he can go to shutter preferred, aperture preferred, or full auto. And then he can also set his white balance. He has an overexposure warning, a grid system, a center point, and also a peak focus threshold that he's able to set. So that's pretty much the, um, the integration of the Hasselblad H60-100C and the Matrice M600 Pro, along with the Ronin MX, uh, in a two-controller two system. And this was uh, the first video in a series. The next one, we're gonna actually take the, the combo outfit out, uh, fly it, and see how it handles together and how it handles with that particular camera. So we appreciate you watching, and we look forward to seeing you next time.